Hello everyone and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Leo was walking across the square when Hattie confronted him about the quality of her job being lacking. Hattie remarked, I thought we were companions, Leo. We actually are. Leo answered back. Hattie told Leo that she would have preferred to stop seeing him. Leo emphasized that he had not intended to undervalue Hattie's performance. The makers are the ones who settle on those choices, Leo stated. Leo lamented that he would never be able to write for Charlemagne's character. For what reason didn't you tell me I was being composed off? Hattie asked. Since Abe and Kate were stressed that assuming you realized over being terminated, you would leave the set without completing your scenes, and afterward we'd be generally screwed and jobless, Leo explained. Hattie smiled. Very similar to who I am. That's similar to me, Hattie remarked. Hattie informed Leo that she had discovered that Leo had been lying to her about Cassandra's death. Leo argued that the twist made the story even more unexpected. You killed me off before I even got an opportunity to have seven days under agreement, stated Hattie. Hattie started crying as she acknowledged that she was upset that she wouldn't have a chance to gain popularity. Leo expressed regret. You really are my sweetie. You exude charm and vitality. Additionally, when you are bloated on pig skins, you learn how to be a huge fool, Leo remarked. Hattie remained agitated. Leo informed Hattie that he thought they could still hang out, but Hattie declined. If by chance you happen to see me heading down the road, I think you should choose the other route. Leo, as I will terminate you if you don't, Hattie stated. Hattie moved aside. Bonnie thanked Kate and Abe in the body and soul offices for keeping her on the show and preserving her personality. Now that Charlemagne will be dead, all her stuff will be available for anyone, right? Bonnie made a query. Her stuff? inquired Kate. Bonnie suggested that Cassandra's disposition be able to touch Charlemagne's unmarried male. Kate interrupted Bonnie as she continued to experiment with ideas, letting her know that she wasn't the star. Love different cleansers, BNB, days, or general medical clinic. Participate in the debate on our SC sheets. To connect with fans and start a conversation right away, click this link. The creation of body and soul is a gathering. When Hattie stopped caring about that, we were left with no choice except to buy her a one-way ticket to drama heaven, Kate said. Kate said Cassandra might go with Charlemagne. I got it, said Bonnie. Bonnie expressed regret. Don't worry, Bonnie. Just remember that body and soul have no stars, both now and in the future. We collaborate as a team, stated Abe. With a hint of humility, Kate continued. Bonnie agreed, but then she asked for a promotion. Just as Abe and Kate averted their gaze, Bonnie revoked her invitation and stormed from the door. When Leo eventually arrived at work, Kate asked him whether he was feeling all right. Feeling like a terrible companion and a spoiled, deficient individual as a rule, affirming all that my mom contemplates me, despite the fact that she's everything, which is presumably why I'm like this, since she passed down portion of her rotten DNA to me, Leo stated. Kate wanted to know what had happened. Leo told Kate about his conversation with Hattie and how worried he was that she might seek revenge. Essentially Hattie is making a dramatic exit, Leo stated. Kate commented, it's definitely a pretty emotional exit. Leo said that he had borrowed the idea from an L.A. regulation episode. As Kayla was getting ready for the day at the medical clinic, Seth informed her that he was receiving payment for handling the performance. I think I've been chomped by the acting bug, stated Seth. You are clearly a man of numerous gifts, Kayla said. Seth saw that he had no intention of giving up his regular job, save for asking if she might speak with the producers about her genuine interest in his character. Maybe a couple of cute scenes, Seth remarked. Kayla held back a smile. At the Demera residence, Johnny cuddled up in their bed with Chanel. Alex appeared, all clothed in Johnny's clothes, as he apologized. What are you doing here? Johnny asked. How do you think I came to be here? 
I'm here to lavish your better half with frenzied, exuberant affection, Alex declared. Alex smiled at Chanel and approached to kiss her in bed. Nah. Give up. When Johnny woke up, he yelled. After pouring Johnny a glass of water, Chanel learned about his horrific dream. Johnny reluctantly told Chanel about his nightmare. I'm really sorry you imagined that. However, since you're in charge of organizing our romantic moment for today, I guess that works fine, Chanel remarked. Johnny said that Chanel's sincere previous disagreement with Alex still irritated him. I will let you know this once again, and I trust it is the last time that I need to tell you, Alex and I, there are no sentiments, Chanel stated. Chanel concentrated on the fact that she hadn't felt any romantic feelings for Alex when they had first laid down. Furthermore, and this isn't typical for you, I never think about that anymore, okay? Now, all we are is associates and comrades, Chanel declared. Yes, Johnny gestured, and then scowled. Johnny asked, Companions? Chanel explained that she and Alex had decided that if they reached some sort of peace accord, work would be less chaotic. You're right. Johnny agreed, saying that the less behind the stage display, the better. Chanel stated, there will be enough show on screen. Chanel realized that Alex and she had agreed to rehearse the sequences at the medical clinic before to the filming, at the time when Johnny suggested they go to work. Johnny indicated with emotion that he was hoping to get to set and film the scenes depicting Charlemagne's death. Which I have an inclination will be somewhat precarious, replied Johnny. Sitting in the front room, Stephanie was talking over the phone with Jada about Rafe's stubbornness. Stephanie remarked, I know you'll keep him in line. Jada received some information regarding Alex, however, Stephanie reported that she had nothing new to share regarding her neighbor. There was a knock at the door. Stephanie assured Jada that she and Alex were only friends as she walked over to reply. As she unlocked the door, Stephanie exclaimed, I'm totally cool with that. In the hallway stood a sweat-drenched and shirtless Alex. After quickly ending the call, Stephanie invited Alex inside. What brings you by? Stephanie made a query. After figuring out that he had bought Stephanie an extra latte, Alex handed her the cup. How ideal to live across the corridor from a man who can expect my requirements, Stephanie remarked. Alex expressed regret for being so wet and explained that he had to the leisure facility to decompress. Huge scene of love with Chanel, stated Alex. Alex explained that the producers had turned down Alex and Chanel's request to reschedule the kissing sequence for a later time since there had been so many requests for script modifications. You ought to feel discouraged, stated Stephanie. According to Alex, he genuinely realized that it was too soon for his personality to merge with Chanel's. What is your opinion about acting inverse Chanel overall? Stephanie made a query. Alex gave in and admitted that he and Chanel had agreed to start over. That is extremely full-grown of you, Stephanie added. Alex expressed his eagerness to progress past the scene of admiration. What is Johnny's opinion pretty much all of this? Stephanie made a query. Alex expressed his confidence in Johnny's well-being and mentioned that he had suggested to Johnny hiring a chief for the romantic sequences. He declined because he needs to demonstrate that he's Mr. Proficient, Alex stated. Stephanie expressed her confidence in everything working out.